Um, one way that for me to determine if my premium is good, um, actually, there's a couple of ways. Uh, number one, I would say implied volatility is pretty high. That's going to probably pay me a decent premium. Uh, the second thing that I can do is, um, so what I would do here, I would look at the spread difference. So 705 minus 680, that's 25. So 0.25 times the delta, which is 0.34. Um, sorry, hold on. Spread times delta equals the fair price is how I get this. But I, I keep forgetting if I use decimals or I don't. So hold on a second times. Yeah, okay. So um, actually, this isn't enough premium for me. So I'm, I should be getting 850. Based off of the delta and the spread, I should be getting 850 for this, not 680. So this actually okay. isn't a good price for me. Right? So, But it may be a good price for buyers. Right? So let's look on... Look on this side. So 30, 30, so let's see, 30 times the delta is 57, 1710. So that's what fair price on the call side, according to the delta, multiplied by the spread difference would be 1710, right? And right now it's only 800 bucks. So that tells me that it's cheaper than where the current delta and spread exist, if that makes sense. So hold on, the formula is the difference between the two spreads times yes. 100 times delta? Yeah, so right here it's eight, uh, 770 and 800. So 30 times 57, which is the delta, 0.57, but I, I don't use the decimals, just whole numbers. So 30 okay. times 57 that's the fair price on this side. So if it's under that number, it's a fair price as far as implied volatility goes. On the on when I'm shorting options, so I'm getting paid when I sell a position, I need this this number to be higher than the fair price, if that makes sense. But implied volatility is the key thing here and uh, my, okay. my chart is telling me the IV rank is at 25%, right? So that tells me that it's got a 75% chance of going higher in implied volatility. And that's what you want when you're buying options. Um, okay. But if you're, if like for me, I need it to go higher. So then when I sell premium on it and IV falls, that benefits my contract. All right, um, and again, uh, just real briefly, I'm going to recap this XPEV. Um, um, so it's in a downtrend. It's got a support level here that it broke through and then went back above it. Um, I think there's potential here for this to bounce. Um, I will say that I've seen a couple, two or three other um, tickers do this exact same thing. And it, uh, matter of fact, uh, I'll show you. BA did this exact same thing a little while, uh, sometime last year. I did it right here. Let's let's take a quick look here before it rips. All right, so right now, um, let me just clear this circle. Uh, right now, we are currently the current look on this is about right there so take a quick look at this boeing situation same descending triangle right broke through support bounce back up above it right and then if i go back to neo yeah that's not what i want Three. so if i if i um Sorry, it was XPath, not Neo. I'm sorry. If you see it, it looks almost identical to BA. All right, so um, it may or may not do what BA did, 
I'm going to go back to BA so you can see again, but just take a mental screenshot of this particular um, setup, right? So here we go back to BA. And I need to go back further so you can see. May I ask a question real quick? Sure. Now, just one sec though. Here, see if you see BA did the exact same thing. Broke through resistance, popped back up, and then went sideways for a little while. And this is why I say buy time. I think it's very important to buy time on something like this. Okay. Um, who was it that wanted to ask the question? Uh, is that Weeble on the bottom of your screen, like the app? How do you do? How do I do that? This is Thinkorswim. Oh, okay. No, because I see it like on the apps, on your bar, all the way at the bottom. Oh, down here. Down here. Yeah, is that Weeble? Uh, this, white this white with the blue, blue is Weeble. How did um, you get that? Because I just looked it up on my computer and I couldn't get it. You have to download the app. Uh, like on the Microsoft Store? No, just go to Weeble's website, I think. Uh, okay, thank you. Appreciate that. No problem. Also, um, can you do Neo real quick? Um, actually, uh, I'm kind of you know confused to make up my mind like what should I do. Um, because there is a you know a lot of hype for Neo. Okay, and, uh, um, Neo did well. Let me let me do Neo here in a sec. I've got Apple and P PLTR that was asked uh, a little bit ago, so let me do those first, and then we'll jump on Neo. Um, okay, cool. Thank I, you. I, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, I think Apple obviously it's hit resistance off this most recent high, and it's doing a little bit of a retracement, but I think it's going to continue stepping up like this. So let me zoom in and get a drawing thing here. So I think it's going to, I think it's going to do something like this, and then it's going to breach its high. Uh, that's what I think Apple's going to do. Um, now it, it could fall. Don't get me wrong, but I'm pretty bullish for Apple, especially long term. Um, okay, let's see, uh, PLTR. Uh, so PLTR is right now on support. And it's this, uh, I'd say this area is a pretty strong support area, right? This one right here. Matter of fact, let me clear out this, clear the draw on set, redraw that, so. So PLTR is doing this this kangaroo thing, but it it, it looks like it's kind of using this area of support. Uh, tomorrow is going to be key. What it does tomorrow is going to, in my opinion, make make or break the direction on the stock because it's at support, which I would say this is a pretty good support level. It last time it touched here, it, it bounced pretty hard. Uh, so. Um, and again, it, it looked like it came close to testing it right here, this particular spot, and bounced hard again. So if it does not bounce hard here, I would expect it to go lower. Um, and this price point is going to be the next support level that I like. Excuse me, where do I go to look at what you're talking about? Like, is there something like, is it like a board I'm supposed to be at or something? Go on to the education portion, the education. And then under the first one is going to say Professor Hostile. And you'll, you'll be able to see the link there. YouTube live stream. So you click okay, on it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, so I, I have a question. So for for PLTR, if it opens in the green, um, you, so you you would be bullish on PLTR if it opens in the green. I would be bullish on PLTR if it goes above twenty five. Okay. But I, it need it needs to do uh, one of one of these pumps, right? Th this is what I'm looking for. Um, 
I do think that in the sometime soon, next month or so, we're going to see the whole entire market turn red and go downwards. Uh, so I think short term, this is this could pump, but next month or two, you know, I'm, I'm expecting majority of the market to start falling, and I'm expecting gold, precious metals type stuff to start pumping. But gold and silver and things like that only push so far. Even in the long term, you've seen, I mean, you could see that. They only they're, hit a certain point. They're gonna they're gonna breach that next level. I'm pretty sure of that. So if I look at silver here, you know, it 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 hit twenty seven eighty eight. This is S L V, it hit twenty seven eighty eight and then started a downtrend. Right. But then it found support and it bounced off that support level pretty pretty good. Right. And now it's breached multiple resistance levels. And so the next resistance level for silver is where it's at, right? 25 bucks. So again, the market swings, the market, the market's money rotates from industry to industry. And what we're seeing here, in my opinion, is the rotation into gold and silver again, right? So um, precious metals is bullish long term. I'm very strongly, I feel very strongly about that. So if I look at Barrick Mining, I mean, this is at a low right now. I expect this to come up, you know, in the next couple of months, like I said. Um, if I look at GDX, GDX is the same thing. You know, it, it, it's, it, when it breaks out above 37, it's going to break out pretty nicely. I think it's going to come back up here somewhere in 40 plus dollar area right um you think it'll they'll all break the last high is high i do i'm i'm bullish on precious metals for the simple fact that they've been printing trillions of dollars right and when when that happens so when 2008 happened they printed a more money than we've all ever seen before at that time, right? In the next two to three years, gold and silver hit all-time highs, right? Now we're back in the very similar scenario. They're printing all kinds of money that we've never seen before. Numbers that, you know, we're like trillions of dollars. You know, it used to be, you know, we're, you know, back in 2008, it's, um, we're going to do a bailout three times and it's going to be 700 billion, right? Now they're doing bailouts for trillions. So. Last time they did bailouts, it took two to three years for gold and silver to pump to all-time highs. This time, they've already, like, gold's already come. I, I think gold actually hit all-time highs, like the, the metal itself. Um, silver's lagging behind, but expect silver and gold's ratio to close. Meaning, you know, how many ounces of silver does it take to buy one ounce of gold? You know, at the height of COVID, it was 120 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. It's fallen down to about 73. Uh, I expect to see it around 40 to 1, 30 to 40, 30 or 40 to 1. And in that scenario, that means both gold and silver are pumping. All right. So, you know, gold pumps, silver follows behind it. Gold goes up 1%, silver goes up 2.5%. All right. So, I expect precious metals to, to start making another run here pretty soon. The things don't keep going up. The things don't keep going down, right? You know, especially specific industries. They, you know, they don't just fall and fall and fall. They don't just lose steam. You know, money rotates in and out of industries. So you guys got to remember that. All right. Um, was that question? Hold on, hold on, Treat. Um, was that it? Uh, I don't remember who was asking the question. It was me. Yeah, that that was all I had to ask. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Okay, go ahead, Treat. All right. Well, um, I had a question regarding vaccines because I've been researching the vaccines, and I came across this one called AstraZeneca. And it's 
the efficacy rate is 20% lower than Moderna and Pfizer, but it's, but it's, they charge like the vaccines like at $1 and $2. So I think it's going to be, be like the next vaccine winner in the, because they can, they, they sell it very cheaply and they don't, they're, they pledge not to take profits. They sell like $2 a vaccine. So this will appeal to like third world countries in my opinion. And like, it just struck a deal, with, or not struck a deal, but there's like talks about India, pos- um, most likely going to sign with uh, AstraZeneca, and the UK also did it, and it's also trading really low. It dipped below like the the fifty level. So, but like my worry was like you know like Pfizer and Moderna, like the investors aren't reacting very positively anymore. This is downtrending. Okay. Have reached a previous low. Let's see. I think fundamentally, though, it has possibilities. I mean, it's like India. I wouldn't be betting on stuff like that. You know, they've already made deals across the world. It didn't affect their stock, so what yeah, that's do you true. Think it's gonna, you know, do any different this time around. That's a good point. Uh, thank you, Hostile, for XPUV showing me that. No problem. Hostile, if it goes to, um, I mean, so you wouldn't bet fundamentally on the stock. What if the investors react positively, though, tomorrow? They won't. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I had some other questions. Can I ask them right now? or uh, uh, l- Let me round Robin off of you. So I'm going to do Tesla, and then you can do another one. Then I'm going to do Piton. Then you can do another one. How's that? All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Tesla. Um, Tesla. I, I think Tesla actually will drop. I'm looking for Tesla to bounce off its previous high, um, all time high, right before or when it did its split. So I'm looking for Tesla actually to come down to the, the 540 area. Uh, so I think it's going to continue making highs. Um, but I. I I do believe that Tesla is going to have a nice solid retracement in the next couple of months for sure. So uh, let's see. Hmm. Earnings are on the 27th. Maybe, maybe hmm. actually, I don't know. Because I expect their earnings to do pretty well, and so unless they come out and say, you know, we didn't, we didn't do as good as we wanted to on earnings, then that's going to be what makes Tesla fall. But if they come out and say we did well, we did very positively, then Tesla probably might go to eight or nine hundred at that point. So uh, this one I'd watch. Uh, Definitely wouldn't try to play anything off this right now. It's at all-time highs. I'd never recommend playing all-time highs on anything. All right, um, treat. Okay, yeah. So I'm I compiled a list of like the like I listened to the advice I heard last week, and I made a list of like the ten stocks I have confidence in. So I was seeing RKT at the twenty point five level as a good entry. No. Why not? Twenty dollars. Why twenty though? Look, you think twenty point five is too too high, right? Oh, you said twenty point five. Mm-hmm. I, I think mean, it's still too high. I would say like twenty point two. It's at twenty twenty two right now. True. I think I should have just entered it last week then. You you can buy pre market before the market opens. Yeah, I'm, I'm trading on. Yeah, um, but if okay, so I'm I, I would want to take this play, so I'm gonna take it tomorrow, and uh, I would ride it to like the twenty two point seven level, right? Twenty two point five. Yeah, I like twenty three. So I've got nineteen seventy three as my entry price. Nineteen seventy three. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't. Know, I honestly like nineteen seventy three too. It doesn't. It doesn't hurt in to get a little bit early, right? It's okay to get in a little bit early, you know, buy a little bit. Remember what I said? You ladder in your position. Yeah. 
but no, it might not hit 1973. It might go to 20 and then bounce, right? Yeah. I'm betting on 1973. Okay. I mean, you do get the most meat of the move. I mean, if it hits there anyways. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you look at Previously, you know, it it dipped down to 1944, most recent. So, twenty dollars was a support level. 1944 is where it bounced below the support. So, previously, I got in at 20, and then it fell a little bit further down to 1944, and then it pumped. Right, I'm expecting the same shit to happen this time around. It's going to get to that support level. It's going to dip below it and then come right back up. Dip below the support level. Hmm. Okay. $20 um, yeah, yeah. I I see what you're saying too. Uh, why why would you say twenty three level though? Because that seems like the very top of the weeks. Well, I'm I'm pretty bullish on uh, RKT. I expect it to go above this resistance point that I drew out twenty two seventy five, but not reach twenty three seventy four. Right. So. I'm basically mm-hmm. hoping that it wicks above this 20, 2275, hits 23, it exits my position, and I'm happy there. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Let me go a little bit closer. So, you can see here, all right? I got this support line. I'm sorry. I got this resistance line. I got this resistance line. Um, yeah. I have the same charting as you. So, I. I expect it to wick above that. Okay, I see. Hmm. Yeah, I think I would want to take a position. How much I'm, I'm supposed to use half of my account, right? Because I'm starting with one grand. I want to use all of it, to be honest with you. All of it? Okay. I mean, yeah, that's that's true. It's, I mean, it's only a thousand bucks in the shares, so it's not like options. If you don't get it, then you lose, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, that, and with a thousand bucks, there's not really much you can do, anyways. You know, with a thousand dollars, you can probably make two hundred bucks here. Mm-hmm. So, I think, yeah. Okay, all in. Maybe a hundred, hundred and fifty, something like that. Okay. So you're gonna have to go all in quite a few times before you get to, you know, five k or something. All right. Uh, one more question: How should I go about averaging in? Because I want to take a position now. Do two hundred dollars, two fifty, two fifty, and then I just average in whenever I feel like it, right? Or average no, down, you, whatever. You, I... you pick levels. So if you want to get in right now, say you buy at twenty dollars and fifteen cents, two hundred fifty bucks. Another five, or another two fifty at twenty. Set another um, entry level at the nineteen seventy three for five hundred bucks. So you do three entries: two fifty, two fifty, and five hundred. Okay. What about if it goes up? Do I average in? No. Why not? Never do that. Just but why take, not? Take the money that it gives you at that point. Okay, so only put in two fifty in the first, and if it hits the key levels that fall below it, then I'll average in. Yes. If it if it opens higher than twenty point two tomorrow, would I just completely look away from taking a position here? Yes. I okay. Would. Because there's not much upside anymore, right? Well, I mean, there is, but don't chase, right? Set the price target you're looking for to get in. And if it doesn't hit it, then move on to something else, right? <laughs> okay. I'm liking the 20. I'm honestly, I honestly like the 20.5 personally. Well, it's your call. It's your money. So yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Ultimately, it's right. up to you when you decide to get in. It's not not something I can decide for you, right? So, yeah, and I'll just learn from experience if I'm wrong or right. There you go. All right. Okay. Thanks. All right. You're welcome. Back to me after the questions again. All right. So, Piton. Um, hmm. You might see Piton hit 140. You might use that as support. Previous 
all time high. Uh, right here. And 39, 33. Might say it hit that. Uh, it's in a downtrend for sure. It's set a lower low, set a lower high. So that's an indicator of uh, trend direction change. All right, Excel. I don't know what this is, but it looks like it's probably going to keep coming down some. This is a downtrend. Lower lows, lower highs, lower low, lower high, lower low. See the trend. All right. That's for 50. All right. Who else has questions? Me. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it was just... Yeah, I, I documented all the plays that I was looking at, which is like around 10 tickers. Okay, so uh, I was looking at Kellogg right now, and uh, entering right now seemed nice to me. You have to give me the ticker. It's just K. I'm liking it right now at this level. Kellogg selling those snacks. Even if this goes opens up like to sixty three, I would still like taking a position here. Well, um, support is at sixty point seven nine. Um, but what I can tell you for sure here, this is an engulfing candle. Mm, what engulfing? Bearish. Bullish. Bullish. I don't read candles very much. I don't either, but I know engulfing candles when I see one, and this one is engulfing its last one. So uh, to me, that says it's probably going to turn bullish. Oh, okay. I mean, regardless of the candle, though, even if it was bearish, would that still be a good entry or no? Um, I mean, it's not bad. I I like, you know, under 61. That is where I'd be happy to get in. As soon as it hits 61, I would probably buy shares, right? Yeah. Let's see. I think I'd enter in with 250 tomorrow to market open. At least that's just me. And then my target would just be 65.8 around that level just to exit because it struggles to get past that level. You see... I'm going to go back to what I said last time uh, we were talking on here. You're looking at stocks that you can't trade. What, this is too expensive? $62? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, if you put $1,000 in, how much How much are you going to get? Right? 1000 divided by, let's just say $62. 16 shares, right? If you buy 16 yeah. shares, $62, that's 992 bucks. If 16 shares goes to 65 bucks, that's a two dollar move times 16. It's 32 dollars. I mean, it's it's not a lot of money. It's 40, maybe 50 bucks. Whereas, you know, if you get into something else that's cheaper, and it does, you know, like let's say you buy something at 20 dollars and it goes to 23, right? Like RKT. Well, mm -hmm. there's a lot more profit there, right? So if I buy thousand yeah. dollars worth of shares, that's 50 shares. If it goes to 23, we're looking at $150 return instead of 40 or 50. All right, so concentrate on the stuff that you can trade. All right, okay. Then I'll just move away from Kellogg. Yeah, just, just when you have the money, then it's fine to scale up. But mm -hmm. until then, it's it's kind of a waste of time, right? Because you're just looking yeah. at something you can't do anything with. True. All right. Um, let's see. Patricia. Um, 
Yeah, I'm, I would consider taking whatever you have left on that one, uh, Patricia, because, again, I'm, I'm seeing this thing. Its trend direction has changed drastically. I mean, it dropped. All right, tried to come back up. I mean, tomorrow could be – it could pump back up tomorrow. You know, if, if you see green tomorrow, then maybe go ahead and take the egg, take take the whatever's left on it come tomorrow when you see green. Um, I always recommend everybody, um, when you get into a position, go ahead and consider where you should be getting out, right? Because if you don't have a strategy in mind, you know, you could potentially lose the whole position. So make sure that you have um, contingency plans in place. Because let's be honest, buying options, it's a 50-50 chance. It goes against you. So the probability of that happening is high. And I would consider having contingency, contingency plans in the event that that happens. CLSK. Mm. This might have might be a double top here. A double top is a bearish indicator, right? So look at it. That wick. That wick. And they're both almost identical. Actually, they are very identical. Um, that looks like a double top to me. It's not a strong one, though. But typically, double tops are used. You know, when when people look at double tops, they look at wicks. Um, the weakness of the candle is the wick, not the body. So might see this one reverse. I mean it's it's at a high, right? It it peaked, touched it, it dropped, came back up, peaked and touched it. Now we're seeing red afterwards. So I think there's a chance that this falls further. Okay. Who else? Me. Oh, hold on. Uh, Jahan, didn't you? That's where you had some questions. I think it was Neo, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, Treep, you can go after this. Um, so, what, what was your question about Neo? So, um, I have a question regarding the cover. Like, um, you know, I'm kind of confused. What should I do with the covered call that, you know, I haven't put yet? So I own a couple hundred shares. And, um, like, I was planning to do the covered, but, you know, this week um, has, you know, a lot of hype about the NEO. So uh, we are predicting that it would be, you know, bullish next week uh, from tomorrow. So shall I wait uh, till Thursday or Friday for the covered, like whatever the price it's trading, just put add the money for a month. Um, so what's your break even again? Was it 45? Yeah, you remember that. Yeah. <laughs> um, first question, what price are you happy with taking in the event that it takes your shares? Um, to be honest with you, somewhere between, you know, 55 to 60, I would more happy to take at 60. Um, so let's let's go with 60. Sell cover calls on January 15th, the 60 strike. That's 168 January. bucks. Okay. January 15th, so 12 days from now. And then when that expires worthless, um, look two weeks out again, right? It'll probably be okay. another hundred some dollars. So you could continuously make a hundred plus bucks on this, right? And IV is going to continue going higher in my opinion. Um, 
you could potentially go lower than 60. Let's see. So, well, no, 56 is the next one. I was, I was hoping to see 58, but it's not there. Let's see what. Yeah, no 58. 58's actually where I would pick. Um, problem is, it doesn't exist on the option chain. So, or 59. 59 would be good uh, because it, it it it's definitely gonna. I think it's definitely gonna test that high, um, but it might bounce off of it and fall. And yeah, personally, so that's my I, concern. Like. Like if he's hit sixty and fall back to fifty again, you know, I don't want to miss that opportunity. Just you know, getting the premium only. Well, if you if you think it's gonna pump for Neo Day, then don't sell cover calls on it. All right, just sell the shares at that point. Set a limit exit order at sixty if you think it's gonna hit it. All right, because you know you're you're. I would say the longer you hold the shares, the more chance it's going to get to 60, right? But there, there's a time frame that at which you would do this. And I would say when it hits 60 and bounces off of it, that's when you sell covered calls at the money and you'll get 500 bucks for it or more, right? And it's a short term. Like if I, like let's say right now it hits resistance tomorrow, you know, you're going to get, and let's say let's just say 49 is resistance. Um, you'd be getting paid $450 for this position, right? So that's what I would do because personally, in my mind, if I own shares of Neo, I would want to try to play off the resistance, right? So let it hit resistance. You sell cover calls on and out the money, it falls, and within two or three days. It hits a bottom, you dump the contract and take in the profit. So you might take in 200 bucks off of 450, right? And then let it pump again, hits another or creates an all-time high, sell out the money there, right? And continuously do that until you get to the price that you're you're happy with, right? Or let's say you want to see it at 75, right? Continuously sell covered calls against neo shares at resistance until it gets to 70 and then unload it when it hits 70 right that's what that i would sense. do if, you, if you're trying to hold shares and you like the stock that's what i would do because you know neo is paying damn good premium man like oh, yeah. even if you go seven bucks seven bucks you know out the money still you get dollar so like you can break even you can lower down one dollar break even every contract you get so if you do just for you know like even that is for weekly okay weekly is paying one dollar so a month would be four let's assume 350 yeah i mean it, if you go to february and a, in a year in a, february in a year february is 435 at your 60 strike yeah yes I would I would do two weeks two week contracts let it hit head, let it hit resistance sell out the money covered calls on it in two weeks out you're gonna see four hundred bucks uh, premium and almost certainly you're gonna see a fifty percent return when it bounces off that resistance and falls all right so again you know hold it until it hits sixty. Hold it or hold it until it retests 58. I don't I don't think it's going to breach that right now. I just don't think it's going to happen. So I, okay, I would so I would wait for it to pump, hit a high. Okay. And it needs to break above, I guess, where it's at. It needs to break above 50. 50 is it. Uh, uh, let me get closer in. 50 is going to be the level that I want to see it break before it starts uh, gaining traction here. But I mean, I, I think it's in an uptrend, right? Um, so 50, then 52.70, then 54.28, and then 58, right? So it's going to retest these levels, in my opinion, in the next week or so. 
think maybe tomorrow it might drop a little bit and then pump. Right? And it's probably going to do that every single day this week. Uh, but I, don't quote me. But what I will tell you, when it hits 60 or gets close to it, sell out the money, cover calls on it, taking the premiums. Because, you know, you're looking, and when I say two weeks, look at the time frame from the high to the low, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Exactly. I didn't even count that until now, right? So 14 days time frame between high and low. That that's and and honestly, um, if you were in a position at resistance, for example, oops, where's it? If you were in a position like let's say right now, um, the stock price goes to fifty eight again, you sell covered calls against your shares, right? Then it falls down and it hits. It does something like this. Hits a thirty eight number, right? So where my red arrow is. The premium okay. for the contracts that you sold at the money, say they were 400 bucks, right here, they'd be worth 200. So you easy, easy money, stupid easy money right there. So I would, I would get out of that. Then I would sell cash puts right here, watch it pump, take the money off the cash puts, hits a hits a high again, sell cover calls again. Right? You can play both ends of this. I like Neo a lot for doing this kind of thing. Right now, I'm just doing cash secured puts because I don't have any shares. So if I end up owning shares, I, then I'm going to be doing the same thing. I I also did the cash put for Fib 19. Like it's kind of paid me $800 premium. I'm already a couple hundred bucks in profit just in a week. So I did a um, January 15th uh, Neo I know, CSP. You did 15th and. Uh, and, and I, uh, I got four fifty for that, and it's already up one hundred and fifty. Yep. So it's so this it's week, nice. you know, if it's hit, <laughs> would be a nice profit. We would be like somewhere around seventy, eighty dollar, eighty percent in profit. Yes, I think so. I mean, let's be honest though, we just had three days of theta decay. All right, my my contracts mm -hmm. of theta decay. I'm looking at. I am looking at fifteen dollars, so forty-five bucks that I just made over the weekend from this just sitting there, right? And if yeah, it pumps, if it, a friend for the cash. Oh yeah, and if it pumps up at all, I'm gonna be in fifty, sixty, seventy percent return, and I've been in the p position. What? When did I alert that? Not long ago. I know that. Um, maybe I did. Did I alert that? I don't think so. You alerted that. I did on the 24th. On the 24th. Oh, you did? Yeah. 425 is what I got paid on that. So on the 24th, that was on Thursday. So. By the seventh of this week, that's going to be two weeks, All right? Um, Neo Day is the seventh, isn't it, or the eighth? One of them days, or the sixth, something it's like. It's a nine. That. It's a ninth. Ninth. Okay, I knew it was around there somewhere. I mean, I don't want to hold it through Neo Day. I want to be out of it before Neo Day. So I'm hoping it does some nice pumping up until then. Then I'm gonna get out, take my profits. Because I think Neo Day might be like battery day for Tesla. A disappointment. I think it's going to, they're going to have great news, but it's not going to be news that affects the company today. It's going to be news that affects them a year or two years from now. All right. So we'll see what happens. But So you would, you would say take profits this week? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to take profits by the end of this week, uh, Thursday or Friday. Since Neo Day is on the 9th, I'm going to mm -hmm. take profits by the end of the week. I'm going to let Theta go ahead and pay me some more money. And then um, I'll take my money. I mean, you know, every day, I, I think I had 15 days of Theta decay for three days. I'm sorry, $15 worth in three days. That's 45 bucks. Now that three days have decayed, that Theta is going to be higher. It's probably going to be $16 or $17 every day. It's going to gain a dollar or two every day. So. 
you know, by the end of the week, I'm going to see another 50 to 100 bucks in just theta decay. So if the stock goes up in my direction too, then I'm going to I'm going to see more than 50% return on that easy. All right. Uh, was that it, um, Johan? Yeah, yeah, that's all. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, Matthew, do you mind muting your mic? Unless you can have you, questions. Can you check out space for, for us, please? Sure. One second. Uh, let's see, I got two questions before yours, so let me answer those real quick, and then I'll get to yours. Um, arcane, is it arcane? Arcane bear? Uh, no. Who was it that had? Who was asking? Yeah. Yeah, it was me. Yeah, okay, me. okay. All right. Um, so <laughs> let me answer these other two first. Uh, so DV Gamby, if I sell a call out of the money and it expires out of the money, do I keep 100% of premium? Yes. Generally speaking, you do. Depends how close to your strike it is. If it's not close at all, then yeah, you're going to keep 100%, maybe 99, 98%. Depends on how much that position's worth at the time. Um, but if all you're doing is selling a call, then yes, that is a naked call. You're, you're selling a naked, or you're shorting a naked position, which could effectively be an infinite loss if the stock rips. All right, so if you're gonna sell, I wouldn't sell calls unless you got shares to sell against. Otherwise, you, that's really risky, and you also need a margin account for something like that. Um, let's see, who? Oh, one more. Are you in here? O U N more. What about me? Uh, what's the question, Owen, Owen Moore? You're welcome, Gamby. Ask your question, Owen Moore. I'm going to come back to you. Um, Arcane, what was your question? Uh, space S P C E. Just, All right. Just if I should buy some shares, I guess. Uh, I'd I'd wait for space to fall some more. I don't like where it's at. I mean, it is kind of using resistance off of a support. So look at this area. This is, I can, I, I could confidently say this is support. So we'll say one, two months. So it might be using this area of support, but I know how space plays out usually, and I would say it's going to keep falling. Um, I mean, you know, it's the trend is down so far. All right. It's it's squeezing. So I'd wait and see what it does. I mean, I you know, if you want shares, I mean, I guess it doesn't hurt to get a few, you know, maybe 500 bucks worth just to get yourself in. But I think the the fall is too steep. On this resistance level, I'm sorry, support level. So I think it's too steep. So I think it it's either going to drop lower or bounce above it. Hard to say, but it's definitely squeezing onto this support line. Um, yeah, I, I would wait on that personally. I don't I don't like space at 23. I like space under 20. 17, 18 bucks is where I like it. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. You're welcome. You're welcome.
how do we interpret increasing or decreasing open interests and how do we trade it? Hmm. There's no real way to interpret increasing or decreasing. You can't really tell if it's increasing or decreasing. All you can tell is how much is on a particular strike. All right? So, I mean, if you look at January 15th for space, for example, or SPCE, um, you know, it's showing 3700 on at the money call side. And the $25 strike is 48000 um, and there's actually quite a bit of interest on space right now, or Virgin. I keep calling it space, Virgin Galactic. Virgin. But um, let's see. Let me draw a fib on this actually, because the more I look at this, the more I feel like it might be a 50% retracement. It's bouncing off to 61. Let me. Well, no, uh -uh. it's below it. Here's the 61 right here. It's beneath it. It's held beneath it for three days. I don't like that. If it held on top of it, then I would be more bullish. But I don't, um, I'm not too crazy about its particular position but you know I, I could be wrong but i don't like this if it was at the 50 percent level doing this then yeah maybe 50 percent retracement is a lot stronger than the 61.8 61.8 stronger when it's on top of it not below it all right hopefully that answers your question um all right go ahead treat uh, I just wanted you to double check uh, my rocket plan. Uh, for me, uh, enter at twenty point five with two fifty bucks or lower, and then at the twenty level, enter more two fifty more in, and then at nineteen point eight, I'll put in five hundred. Sounds fine. All right, and also one more thing, hostile. Um, what you were mentioning about like it being affordable for my portfolio. Uh, I think I'm going to have to value uh, like just me knowing the company more rather than like the profitability because like these companies, like I know them and like they're not going to go to shit. Well, it does I help mean, to know the company for sure. No, no argument there. Um, but if you're talking about fundamentals with a expensive ticker, then, you know, and now you're trying to get into something that's not affordable, right? So there's more money to be made on smaller things. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. But I'm going to um, I'm going to buy those stocks like Kellogg's, even though there's a lot less profit for my account size. Well, twenty dollars is twenty dollars. True. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll just uh, just cycle back to me then after. All right, who else has questions? Um, did you cover PLTR? Yes, I did. Okay. I'll yes, hi, I have a question. Okay. Yeah, I have some uh, BA calls, uh, January 22nd, 242 strike. What do you think about that? Um, I think you're going to need more time. Although BA looks like it's doing a slow consolidation downward. I mean, the, the movement's really small. So, I mean, that, that's, a, that's not a lot of movement at all as far as price action. You, know, you got one big movement here. Went down then back up. Um, I think you need more time. 122 is not enough, in my opinion. I don't think it's a, a, a bad call. I just think you don't have enough time. I mean, you might. It might rip tomorrow. Who knows? I mean, I think a lot of these 
travel stocks are poised for a pop potentially but time frame wise it's hard to say right? I, I i can't there's no way for me to look at it and say you know we got two weeks and then it's going to pop um i don't trade that way so i haven't learned how to read charts that way if that makes sense i read charts on a monthly basis so um you know i think ba I'd be happier with like a February monthly contract on that one, to be honest with you. Okay, thanks. One quick question. Do you guys discuss about the Senate election this uh, this coming weekend? I think that's really important for the stock market. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think if... It can, I honestly, I really don't know. I got to the point where politics is just, it's just a show, right? And they're going to say what they want to say and pander to the right groups or the groups that they want to pander to and, and shit on the ones that they don't like. Right? It's, it's very polarized and hateful. And, you know, maybe it'll affect the markets, but. I don't think it's going to have too much of an effect because you got to remember, you know, big money corporations, they got their hands in the pockets of the politicians. So, you know, whatever happens, they're going to benefit either way. That's the way I see it. All right. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Solo, solo, solo looks like it's solo. Um, it's near support. Uh, January fifteenth. Hmm. You know, you're you're. You guys got to stop giving yourself not enough time. You know, January fifteenth position here. I mean, solo looks like it's been consolidating slowly, and it's at support. Yeah, I believe it's going to be bullish here soon. But how soon? Soon enough for your January 15th call to show money? I don't know. Probably not. Especially a $12 out of the money. I mean, that's way up there. Unless you bought that Friday or Thursday, I mean. You know, if you bought it on Thursday, market close, a $12 strike, when it is at the bottom, then yeah, okay, maybe you got some potential to see something in the next two or three days. But if you've had that for a good little bit now, honestly, trying to see that come back. I mean, Taha Siddiqui is who I'm talking to. I hope I said your name properly. Um, tell me when you got in the position, how much was the stock when you got in? What, what's your... What's your um, loss? Oh my lord, my child's going crazy. So, until I know more information about that, there's not much else I can say. And, excuse me, since we're, since you're on solo, um, and while he's get back to respond, I did grab one right before closing on Friday. It was the what the eight strike at at twenty eight. So I'm at even because I grabbed it right before. But it is a Jan fifteen, and I was wondering if that was too soon for a pump. And I kind of just thought that it would kind of rise with the neo kind of simultaneously. Do you see maybe that, or is it still too far, too mm -hmm. far in? It could. Um, I, like I said, I don't, I don't like these short term things. I mean, this doesn't look like, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to say it doesn't look like, look like the kind of stock that's going to make a quick, quick movement. It's just the past couple of weeks, it's just not really been doing much. Right. So, you know, I don't know how I feel about it right now, other than the fact that I would say that it's bullish because it's at support. But how bullish is the question, right? 
um, buy shares, right. you'd be in an awesome position right now. I mean, maybe I'll get some shares, uh, but I just I don't personally don't like playing things under ten dollars. It's just it could it, you could lose money just as fast as you can make it, even with shares. Um, can I talk about this? Sure. Um, solo, they have you seen their cards before? I I don't I don't really like fundamentally. I I don't like the stock. So if I would be taking shares, I wouldn't be taking shares for this. But that's just my opinion. Yeah, I, like three good cards. I I don't I don't like it. I'm only looking at charting, so I don't know anything about the company. And like I said, I'm not interested in fundamentals necessarily because I'm not interested in being in this in anything longer than a month. All right, so I could care less what they're doing. You know, it's it's kind of a hype ticker. That's about it. So part play of the, the hype. All the yeah. EV stocks are all hyped. They're just hyped. Like they none of them have actually like produced results except a couple. Yeah, Tesla. Yeah, and, and I guess, and that's kind of that's kind of what I'm worried about because I, I I'm kind of too high on it just mentally because I I got in at shares at like two fifty and then it had that pump, seen a good return, and I kind of just want to take my return and run instead of continuing, you know, because I don't know how much more it can, you know, it's not all keep hype. in that range. All of this stuff is long term investments. Everything starts somewhere. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, they don't have any results, though. Hell yeah, except they got Neo, results. Except and Neo and Tesla, and and like, like some other X-Pev. company. Yeah, XPEV, Lee, XPEV, Lee, Neo, and Tesla. Every other company is overhyped. I honestly think they're overhyped too. Other ones maybe, but I don't know. Those are the only three I'm really worried about. Workhorse honestly. barely has any results. Fisker zero results. This solo, no, I don't think so. I'm hearing Fisker is supposed to be good, but I have to do. I researched research. it. They One thing that I remember cars. about Fisker is their car caught on fire. So they have the car called the Ocean, and it caught on fire. From ocean yeah, they had a battery water. issue. It was during Hurricane Sandy. Caught fire from a flood from the from the ocean. I think it was in. Uh, Hmm, Jersey, maybe, or New York City, somewhere where there was right next to the coastline. And one of the cars um, was the tires were underneath the water on the car and it caught fire and exploded. So Fisker has got a long ways. I mean, I, I bet they're hoping that nobody remembers that. That's what I bet. Yeah, don't mess with Workhorse. I tell everybody that. All they have right now is the contract, and that's they were supposed to sit out. Yeah, Workhorse um, on the chart looks nice, but I would be scared if UPS said something, you know? Wouldn't want to play that. Well, they, they have... Um, I mean, if you've ever... So I know a guy that works at UPS, and... I've asked him about workhorse and he said every single truck has workhorse involved somehow with something. All right. So I don't know what it is, but they've got their feet in there somewhere. So it's, it's not all BS. What, what workhorse is really hoping and depending on is that USPS contract. I mean, they want a percent of the contract, and even with the percent, it's not like it's in the skyrocket to like on ninety the same day. It day. did, it did, it did bleed out because of the the fact that they were stalling it again. So it might be good, right? Because you could just find an entry at the support level, and then you can just average down, even if the news comes out and the stock drops a lot, right? Because it's not going to go completely to shit. What do you think, hostile? Well, I don't know. Um, I don't know how badly it could fall what i would say is you know next time it hits 23 or 24 dollars if you're in it you get out take profits right i made the mistake of not taking profits last time i hit 23 i was up 450 dollars within five days should have did it um but in my defense i was 
busy with work and family and I really didn't pay much attention. So, you know, I was 2K with Workhorse the day that they were so called were supposed to get the contract in October and the shit plummeted the next couple minutes. I was like, I lost like 3K. I was up 2K, lost 3K. So that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about here is when they announce that, hey, we're going to, if they don't even tell you about the contract, that they just give a date, get out before that date. Always get out before whatever date that's being, just like I was saying about Neo, get out before Neo Day, right? It might pump past it, but I expect it to pump towards it, right? And come Neo Day, if it's really fantastic stuff, let's say they, they're coming out with a car in three months and, you know, they got all this cool shit happening within three to six months, then yeah, Neo's going to rip. But prior, if it, if it's, if it's like Tesla's battery day where Tesla says, oh, in two years, we're going to have manufacturing done the way that makes our batteries the best and this and that, that doesn't help Tesla today, right? That's why Tesla fell from battery day because it was, it was good news, but it was long-term news. It wasn't short-term. It's too long. All right. Um, somebody's asking about BE. Bloom Energy. Mm. It's just in an uptrend. I mean, I don't see any support. I got, a, I got a question after that, if I can talk. Sure. Um, uh, can I go right now or should I wait? Uh, let me finish. Um, so right. I don't see too much going on here with BE other than an uptrend. Right. That's about all I see here. Um, it could potentially be squeezing like a upward squeeze. That's a good, good thing, I think. Well, that's about all I'm seeing here. I mean, I would expect this to jump back up to $31, $32. And, and maybe keep following this trend until it fully squeezes out. And I would go with a breakout before I go with the dump. However, let's see. So it looks like they've been outperforming. I mean, they're still negative, right, on their earnings. but actual has been better every month so this month or this quarter rather 34 negative 34 negative 23 and negative 4 cents so hmm looks like it actually builds up and then come near earnings it falls Right, so kind of looks like it's doing that. So if you see here, builds up to earnings and falls, builds up to earnings, falls. Um, this one's been building. So I'd say, yeah, by maybe this squeeze right here is going to start falling. But if uh, they are positive in earnings, I expect it to rip. Just because they've been negative for three quarters, and if they become positive, I mean they're only four cents negative on the last quarter. So if this coming quarter is positive, you know I expect the stock to jump. All right, let's see. I'm sorry, which stock was that? B E. Thank you. Welcome. So I did go over workhorse. So look at FSR. I think it's first solar. No, it's Fisker. Ugh. Uh, let's see. We're on the 180. Ignore those. Okay. All right. So uh, who was the had the other question now? You can go ahead. Uh, me. Okay. So I have a question on the um on the on the swings that Stock Shark did. Okay. I don't I don't know if you happen to know anything about that. About the um BBBY one and the NEE. I was just wondering what was the reason why he called those. Mm. Would you happen to know? 
I don't know off the top of my head. I mean, I can try and guess, though. Uh, which one do you want to start with? I'm looking at BBBY. Um, I don't know. Let's see. One, two, three. Paul, what's up, Jimmy? Let's see here. So we got, I mean, it's what time did he call that out? BBY. Anybody know? Do you know what time he called? Um, uh, he called it at. BBBY, he called it at no at twelve. Uh, he told him the thirty first. Yeah, I see the date. I just don't know what time he called it because the time is important, right? If he called it at market open, I can understand. Um, uh, I think he probably called it at twelve uh, at one o'clock or twelve thirty. Let's say six fifty one. Let's say six fifty one a.m. So that's like nine. That's at market open. Assuming your 651 is West Coast. Oh, yeah, I'm in Cali. <laughs> 651. Hmm. The, the thing is, the contract was at 115 at, um, at 1230. So I don't know if it, I, I'm guessing it's that time, maybe. No, it's maybe not 951 morning. in the morning. So 6.51 a.m. West Coast is 9.51. Um, and on the chart here, it looks like it did a, a V, and he was probably expecting it to start moving up when it looks like it went the other direction. Um, I got it pretty low, though. I got it at, um, I got it at 93, and it's at 97 right now. Yeah, he must have got it later in the day then. Yeah. So hmm. I was just wondering if there's, if, if there's any possible uptrend down it. And if there is, like, how would you know? I mean, there could be based off of resistance. I'm sorry, support. I keep, I always do that. So yeah. support, it's right here. All right. So I've got multiple things touching that support level. All right, I got this one, this one, that one, this one. Looks like some small ones here. All right, and then finally, end of day. Um, I, I'm sketch about this one for the simple fact are you, that. Are you streaming? Yes, I am. Oh, I, I can't see it. You need to go to the education section and look under my tab, and you'll see the live stream link. Education. Oh. Okay, I got it. So it's got multiple levels that it touch support. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then this right here is Thursday. So the thing that I'm not liking here is the fact that it went below that support level. So if tomorrow it doesn't go back above it, it's going to have, I mean, it's got a lot of gap to make, right? The next support level is at 1450, right? So honestly, if you see it falling tomorrow, I would seriously consider cutting because it's okay. got this, this huge gap in between where it's at and the next. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't even call this area support. You know, I would, I would probably say, if this strong resistance, well, somewhere in here, somewhere in this this section is going to be where it stops. If it falls and it falls heavy, somewhere here is going to be where it stops. And there's not enough information here for me to say it's going to be at this point or this point. It's just going to be anywhere from fifteen to twelve thirty. Uh, okay. Okay. So pay attention to that one like a hawk. All right, and what about um? Ne. 
second one. I know that one. In E or N double E? N double E. Yeah, I went over that one, but um, you know, we got a support oh. line here. Did you go over that at the beginning? Yeah, I did. Oh, I wasn't here at the beginning. I couldn't get on. Um, you can always watch. The yeah, I'll just yeah, I'll just watch the YouTube again. Yeah. Okay. Do you know? Do you happen to know what time you went over it? It was pretty early oh. on. I'd say like one of the first five tickers that I went over. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Let's see here. OCGN. Oops. I do not like OCGN at all. That that to me is scary. I expect this to fall pretty hard. I wouldn't touch that. I don't mess with penny stocks. All right, who else? Me, me. Anybody else other than Treep before I let Treep go? All right, Treep. Okay, so I had a question regarding Snap. Uh, I, I just want to know, uh, in your opinion, where you like this. Do you like this at the 44 level? If you got there. Mm. Not really. I mean, it's not bad, I guess. Let's see. You're just trading too high? Four. I mean, 44 is okay, but I like it a lot more at under 38. 38. But this thing... This might go sideways and then start a new leg up, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just like these stocks, like Snap and Twitter, like they, they both like, well, it's, they like, not Twitter, but like, it's just like Snap where it just runs up a lot and then it's just holding up there. You don't, would you like playing these stocks? Like, like they're just holding up here, like at this level? Not really. I don't, I don't like Snap. I mean, considering that, you know, not too long ago it was in the teens. You know, it's it's a hyped pump stock. It's not a growth stock where the company, you know, does some well-performing stuff and then turns around and does good on earnings, right? I mean, you know, like earnings were a penny. Right? They estimated it negative and went up to a penny and then it ripped, right? I mean... Let's be honest. Yeah. It's just been going up since. It doesn't. No, I don't know. I mean, All right. One thing I can tell you. Let's see, eight cents. Yeah, no, that doesn't make any sense. Um, I expect this to probably go sideways that, until something else hypes it up. All right. Okay. I wasn't seeing an entry into this. Um, also, for Twitter, is that a cup and handle I'm seeing? On what chart? TWTR. Sorry about that. No. On what? What time frame? Uh, one day, one year. No, I don't see any cup and handles. Um, is, it, is that the U, and then it goes sideways? <laughs> that's not a. That's not. <laughs> is not. This right here looks more like a cup and handle. Yeah, the one day, one year. Look where I just drew it in September, October, August, September. Your that thing's... looks more like a cup and handle than what you're talking. I think you're talking about this, this ugly looking thing. That's no cup and handle. The new one. Uh, 
I'm looking at the, the newest one, the one that formed the curve, and then, yeah, that one, the big circle one, the yeah, big that, bulge. I wouldn't call that a cup and handle. So cup and handle means it has to go upwards after the U, right? It has to make a U and then go sideways for the handle. Okay. All right. And where would you like Twitter? Would you like like a consistent like this one? I think 39 level is pretty good. Well, it looks like I got a, something drawn. Yeah, 3894 is something I drew. Right, right. Because there was like some really shit news and they shot themselves in the foot and then it dipped from that time. Yeah, it looks like it did a... Uh... It gapped down, and then from that, from there, it filled the gap. I'm not even see. Oh, you're not using the high can thingy. No, I have right. regular train candles this time. Okay, okay. All right, thanks. I'll uh, just rotate back again. All right. Um, DV Gamby. Which one are we looking at? Oh, the Tesla? I'm sorry. Not Tesla. Are you are you in Discord? It would help if you could talk on the mic. To be honest, because You there, DV Gamby? Oh, he's not here. Would you like me to read what he says? I see what it says. I I, I think I'd. I'm just trying to get him to talk because it might be a little bit easier to uh, for the both of us to comprehend what's going on with what he's trying to say. I mean, I kind of get it, but it'd be a lot better if he could talk. I mean, he's basically asking about naked calls and puts. He wanted to sell... Tesla naked at 590 January 8th, $165. Analysis shows 3% 3 3 in the money, 97% out of the money. I don't think that's risky at all. It's very far away from the risk. But I'm not sure that you can, I mean, you're going to need a lot of margin for that. See. Regular look at monopolistic behavior and also Alibaba. Um, Tesla, January 8th, not the 15th. 590. I mean, you're going to need a lot of collateral for that. 58,000. Or margin, if it's just margin, it's probably going to be at least a quarter to half of that. So you're not going to be able to sell naked without substantial margin, especially with something like Tesla. I'd be selling cash puts on Tesla if I had the money for that. This thing pays nicely. Thousands. Five day expiration, it's paying twenty two hundred dollars out the money. I think you got a January fifteenth, this thing pays six hundred 
600 strikes paying 480 bucks. I mean, easy, stupid money. All right, let's see. Is there a three bar on MP daily? You talking about the red bars, um, Ashton? Not sure what you mean by three bar. All right, let's see. Are you looking at the dailies, not the day? I gotcha. Ashton, what exact time frame are you talking about here so I can look at the same one you're looking at? Yeah, I can tell. What's the time frame that you're looking at? What's the exact month and candle? Yeah, which one of these are we talking about? Some people say daily. They mean just one day. Some people say daily. They mean the one year. So, you know, hard to tell what, what everybody means. You got to tell me exactly which one. Which one of these? So if you look at here, you've got the time frame and then you've got candles, right? One day, one minute, five day, 15 minute, right? 10 day, 30 minute. So the left side is, is the time frame, the right side are candles. No, I don't, you're going to have to, like, if you're, you got to tell me what time frame that you're looking at, and then I can try and see and understand what you're trying to say. Otherwise, we're just going to be spinning wheels right, right now. All right, so um, still, though, you, even though you're only using Weeble, there's still a, a particular time frame on the chart that you're looking at. So when you can get me that information, then I can help you. You know, when you say day chart, is that one year, one day? Or is that just one day only with one minute candles? You know what I'm saying? Like, you can have to be a little bit more specific. All right, so uh, who else has questions? Me. Go ahead. All right, I had a question regarding Coca Cola. It's in a channel upwards, like after the COVID crash. Um, but could I play that at the bottom of the channel? You're seeing it too, right? Uh, KO. What's the time frame? One day, one year. What channel Just, uh, are you talking about here? Uh, upwards channel. I don't see. Any I'm using channels. the using the thingy. Uh, here. Regression channels? No, no, I'm just seeing a, a channel sloping upwards. Uh, can I send it to the lobby? Sure. Thanks. Oh, I sent it. Oh, 
I see. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing, at least. I mean, it's an uptrend. Yeah. Is it risky to play it when it hits, like, let's just say, like, the 49 level? Should I just stick to support resistance and, like, not try these channels thingies? I mean... Channels are good for certain types of stocks. You're using Heikenashi, so I'm going to have to go over to that. Yeah. It just looks easier to see from what I saw after you showed me it. I mean, it's in an uptrend, and you could potentially play it off that bottom trend line. It's risky, though, right? I mean, not really. Coke's not really that risky, you know. I wouldn't be it too could, worried about it. It could dip below it, the channel, though, right? I mean... Yeah, but holding Coca-Cola for a long time isn't going to kill you. I mean, you know, that that's a long-term stock anyways, so there's no harm in trying to flip shares of that, and you get stuck with it at a high price, then, you know, hold it until it goes back to profit. And you'll get a little bit of dividend while you're at it. Yeah, that's true. All right. That's, I mean, uh, but what do you think? Like, I mean, I'm trying to go with this, um, go with what, like, what you're trying to do, sort of. Uh, would you play it if it was at the bottom of the channel? I don't like Coke because it's too slow for me. My money will be sitting there for a little while. It's just not fast enough. Um, I mean, it's not a bad idea to play off of the channel, for sure. I mean, Coke is in an uptrend, like I said. So, I mean, but you see, after COVID hit, it dropped to 36. It did a pump. It went to uh, f almost 50. And then it's, yeah. its next lowest low, which was right around 44. Right, so from that point to where we're at now, it's only gone up $10. That's boring. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Before 54. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, I see. yeah, yeah, true. That's a good point. There's just not a lot of move in there, right? So The move is uh, around, how much is it? 47. It's only like a three two dollar move, so that's okay. I see. All right. Yeah, but it's not and, a lot, man. Unless you got fifty k in here, then then I'd say, all right, play Coke, play the two or three dollar movements. Sure, you can make you know two percent on fifty k, right? I mean, that's that would be okay, right? I mean, fifty thousand times two percent, and that's a G. Uh, you know, you could do that, but. You're not playing with 50 grand, right? So. Yeah. All right. Uh, I had another question about uh, JKS, Jinko Solar. What do you think about it? Do you know the company? I don't. Well, I'm just seeing a downward sloping support. And it's like a big Chinese solar company. It's like a competitor of CSIQ. Hmm. It'd be risky to play it, right? Because honestly, what I got out of it, um, it competes with Canadian Solar, but f uh, like far, uh, like around that, I looked at like a bunch of articles, and nothing was like a super big red light. But that's all I know about it. So I'm like considering, like, should I just remove this from my watch list? Because I list, I remember what you said about the Warren Buffett thingy. Just stick to stocks that you like legit just use so you have a better idea of where it's going. Like, I all I know about this is stuff I've seen online. So, so it sounds like you know, over the past month or so, every when you've been here asking questions, you've asked about tons of tickers, and I think you're overstretching yourself. You need to stick to a list, a specific list, and don't deviate from that list. If you right. find something that's fantastic, add it to the list, sure. But while you add something, get rid of something. 
There's no point in watching 50 or 100 tickers. You're not going to be able to trade all that. You can't keep yeah. up with all of it. It's just too much. Okay. I limited it. I, I narrowed it down to um, how many tickers? 15, 20 tickers that I'm going to follow. And I think that's too much, to be honest. Too much? You. Hmm. I mean, like, with your experience level, that's too much. Right. Now, if you've been doing it for 10 or 15 years and you've been watching these tickers for 10 or 15 years, then then by all means, right? you don't have to do analysis on it necessarily. You can just look at the chart and say, oh, this is a good price level. You know, I have confidence in this company, blah, blah, blah. Right? But you know, you're asking questions about t- uh, tickers that you don't know anything about. And you know, it's just, it, you're wasting your time on things you shouldn't be bothering with because you just haven't had the time or experience to follow it, right? You gotta, you gotta give it time. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that was my last question anyways. Okay. All right. I'll do that then. I'll study um, a smaller list of tickers and go around with it, play around with it. Okay. Who else? Uh, hey, um, what do you think about um, POTR tomorrow or this week? I think I talked about PLTR earlier. Um, uh, I probably was not here. Uh, you can watch the recording once it's yeah. done. Okay, sure. It's, it's one of the first ones that I talked about, though. So, all right, thanks. No problem. Thanks. Okay. Anybody else? And did you hit um, AT and T earlier? No, I didn't. No, nah, and I think you kind of answered my question kind of similar to Coke. Um, it's it's a slow mover, but when I look at these premiums and at the price that they're at, like you're looking like mid January, and I know you said that you you'd rather kind of go with longer, you know, further dates out, but you know, going up sixty cents and you're looking at premiums at thirty cents. Um, I think it was like twenty nine uh, strike. In particular, I was looking at let me try it. Uh, like January fifteenth, even January twenty second. Like if you want to kind of do the end of the month, because I think they're giving out dividends. Um, I don't think that's enough time. That this moves pretty yeah. slow. I mean, lately it's had a couple of decent moves, right? But. No, it's not going to keep doing that, in my opinion. And it's a slow mover, so if it yeah. does, like, their balance is 50 cents. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, I was asking Kale that, so he just said mention it in the group. Yeah, that, definitely a slow mover, man. I mean, with options on slow movers, you, it, it's theta is going to kill you, honestly. Yeah, even if you average down, it just... Yeah, it's just a... It just yeah, wouldn't yeah, move yeah. in time. Word up. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, Tilio? I mean, not Tilio. <laughs> Hostile. Sorry, I was writing a question to him. What's up? Hostile, can I ask one? Just the last one. You sure? Yes. It's regarding time frames. It wasn't related yeah. to the list I had. So, um, yeah. You told me um, I just have to go to a t- custom time frame, but when I go to the, 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 the time frame button and I click custom from and to, I can only set a range between specific dates. That's not the one I'm talking about. So you got to go to customize list at the bottom of your favorites. Okay, customize list. And then you can click on add time frame. Yeah, but they don't have 60 from what I clicked it. So there's a way that I did it. Let me see. I forgot how I did that actually. Hold on, let me look yeah, at it. I really like six. I mean, I, I've, I've been trying to use different ones, so I want to add it.
it's weird because I had, um, someone else showed me 60 Day. I was like, how did you add that? And they didn't even know either. I remember I was able to manually type this in. It's weird. Edit. Edit. Oh, okay, here it is. So add time frame or range. Sorry, not range. Hold on. Okay, no, it's on time. So add time frame, go to time, and then click on custom. Okay, custom. And then up to today. So you're going to type in 60. Up to today. Okay, on, on time. On yeah. Drop down. Custom. Up to, and then day 60 day, right? And that's it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to need to put in um, aggregation period. I do one hour. Okay. I think that's how how to do it. Let me just check. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks, Hostel. I got it. You got it. You're welcome. I won't ask anymore. Sorry about that. It's fine. Gick. Um, doesn't look like it's been doing much except for the past month. Oh, it's a new stock too. I don't really like new stuff like this. I mean, it just went sideways for what one, two, three, four, five months, and then it started to wake up. I don't like stuff like that. This particular thing needs to create additional his history for me to have any kind of feeling about it. Like there's no analysis that I can do here. I mean, I could say. Support down here at 11, resistance at 16, but beyond that, that's that's all I got. Well, if you're if they're going to merge, it's better to be with the company that does the merge versus the company that it does the absorbing. And then dump it as soon as it merges. Or right before it merges. You want to get it when the stock's pumping. Because typically the absorbing company is the one that falls. Where the merging company is the one that rises in these type of takeovers, I guess. All right, who else has questions? What's Comcast's um, ticker symbol? Com? Nope. You have to give me a ticker symbol if you want me to look at something. Looks like it's traveling in between forty nine eighty and fifty two fifty. All time highs though. I mean, they might they might do a pullback, to be honest with you. I, th I think this might have a pullback. I don't know. I mean, it, it it might go sideways. It might fall down to 47. It might go sideways. I, I would expect it to come down some, though. Maybe to 49, 48, 47, some, something like that. But it looks like it 
I mean, it, it jumped above its resistance level of 4750 with strength and, and stayed above it. So that's a bullish signal. But moving forward, you know, we could see it go sideways a little bit or, or have a, a slow uptrend, kind of like something like this right here. Um, or it might, so look, that's where I draw. Something like, like this or something like that. Because it's already did its move. Right. So after it makes its move, then it goes sideways from what I'm seeing. So I'm going to draw out all its moves. Right. So with the circle. So that's a move. That's a move. Right. I expect it to go sideways some. Some choppy sideways this. Okay. Who else? All right. Well, maybe I'll end it early tonight, 11 o'clock. Give another few minutes. I got one question for you. Okay. Um, I'm assuming did you, you got out of that uh, net app um, spread that you called out a while back, right? No, I didn't. I tried. I tried to sell it at 375 and so I'm just wondering, um, what would the price have to be for someone to exercise that one we sold? You think around like 68 something since. It's like got a 50 cent dividend or 48 cent dividend and it hasn't really dropped below like $3. So the extrinsic so value needs to be less than the dividend. So let me take a look. I think the way to do this is subtract the two from each other. 2.45 minus 0.685. This number needs to be less than the dividend. So dividend is 49 cents. This needs to be less mm -hmm. than 49 cents. So being that we've got February, um, we should not be exercised on that. We're not really deep in the money. If we were like somewhere up here, like the 40 or 45, then yeah, I can see that. Or even, you know, because he's, if, if you see up here, like um, the 50 and the 55, you know, this ex extrinsic value is 38. So even if I subtract the eight, eight and a half from it, it doesn't matter. Like the, the, the short, is still lower than 40 not 0.49 right um if it was these two so if it were set 55 and 60 then you'd be in danger of of assignment or exercise or whatever so 0 0.685 minus 0 0.385 yeah so under 0 0.49 you'd be in trouble but Right now, as it sits, oops, these two, the spread is 1.9, so it's got to be under 0.49. Uh, so I, I um, I posted a, an article that discusses that. I don't know if you got a chance to read that. I'll look for it. Let me see if I can. I think it was in. And they'd have to um, do it by January 8th, right? Isn't that the... Uh... Yeah, yeah. You'd have to be... You'd have to be assigned by X dividend date to be obligated to pay out that $49, basically. It's $49. So it's $0.49 cents times 100, which is... 
49, I believe, right? Let me just check. Yeah. Yeah, so it's 49 bucks. I mean, it's not too awfully bad, I guess, if you had to hold it. But uh, So if you look on the Selling Premium channel, the, the chat, um, I pinned it. Options and dividends, understanding early exercise and ex-dividend dates. At the very bottom, it explains extrinsic, extrinsic value. And if you get, if, if the exercising happens or when it happens, it's got to be, the spread must be less extrinsic value versus the dividend. Okay. So I think we're good. Yeah. I'm going to test yeah. it out, to be honest with you. I'm going to see if I it think it'll get up there. I mean, thing is, like, you know, we've got a lot of time left on this, number one. Um, and as long as we don't get a sign, as long as this thing doesn't pump in the next few days, we should be fine. And it's funny, I, I, I set my limit exit order before the other guys there are like four or five people that, that are in the same play they all got theirs um, executed but mine was submitted first and i had a lower exit price but somehow they got out first because i actually set mine to 25 dollars, not 30 and somehow <laughs> they got it out and i'm like what the hell man this is bs so I tried to get out of that because I knew it was gonna it was gonna keep going up after it um, did its move. Um, I, I just had a feeling it was gonna start going up. I mean, you know, I'm I expect some kind of retracement though here soon, right? Um, so get out sooner than later. Yeah, I mean, so it's been running up for what two months now? Is that? Almost three months. Looks like two months. Um, hard to say, man. Looks like it actually runs up for three months. But it's got some sideways movement on these run-ups. So we've had a lot of sideways for the past six, nine months. So I expect it to do some kind of fall here pretty soon. Um, we might actually see more profit than everybody else did if we're lucky. But it needs to be, let's see, break even is 64.50. So by let's see, uh, so it's February 19th, right? So by February 19th, the price needs to be for break even. Price needs to be at 62.78. All right, so we've got 47 days left. I think we. I mean, I'm gonna be. Mind blown that this thing keeps pumping that whole time. I mean, because if you look at it, it looks like it's cresting right now, right? You see that? Looks like it's doing some kind of crest and kind of goes sideways. I'm hoping that it, it falls some more. Um, but who knows? Who knows what happens? So you would you would hang on to it till the till the expiration? Well, I'm gonna hang on to it unless I can take a ten dollar loss. Or let me back up. I'm gonna hang on to it unless I can take a less of a loss than the forty nine dollar. The other day, so uh, Thursday, it showed a dollar fifty loss. I tried to get out as soon as I put in my order. It went up to twenty. It's like fuck. Um, so I almost got out for that. Uh, right now it's showing $43 loss. All right, so, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not too worried about it. You know, it's 
it's just a little bit of money, right? It's just for, honestly, this account, this margin account for me is more for fun and experimental than anything. I mean, I'm doing leap calendar leaps here. I've got two, right? Um, well, this is just a leap by itself. I'm waiting for gold to do a pump before I sell calls. But silver, you know, I've got, I got my leap and my short both giving me pretty decent profits. I mean, you know, I got $60 return and come um, tomorrow, uh, silver is going to be, let me see how much state of decay on that short. So you know, only $2. So $6 over the weekend that I'll gain. And it'll potentially uh, go up another dollar next day or two because it's expiration's coming. Um, so if I subtract six dollars, now I'm going to be at sixty-four dollars return on this leap, calendar leap. So, like I said, this is my my play portfolio. My my Roth account is where I'm after real returns. This is just for some BS stuff, you know, ra random credit spreads, um, random leaps, random calendars, diagonals. I can't do those kinds of plays on my Roth accounts, so this is where I do them. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, I was just wondering about that. Thanks. And I'll, I'll read that uh, article you posted. Yeah, it's a good article. The very bottom though, is probably where you're most interested. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I've got a tape account and like that's all they try to get you to do is just sell stuff you get a what so, account the tasty works oh oh yeah okay and, yeah, i mean uh, I, i'm disappointed in this stock because or an in tap because you know i i recommended sell orders every time i hit 30 dollars profit i put in my order to get out and none of them executed and everybody else's did other than yours it sounds like you didn't get it either. Um, no, well, I didn't have an order executed, but um, or I didn't have an order set. I tried to sell it at three dollars and seventy five cents, but I think it there's. I don't think there's a lot of interest in it. Open interest in it. I think there is. Let's see. I mean, I chose something that had decent. Yeah, I mean, we're looking at four thousand ninety one on the long and seven hundred and thirty on the short. I mean. Should be plenty, right? 500 is what I look for for spreads, at least 500 okay. on both. So, you know, it's it's there. That's why I was surprised it didn't execute my order because I'm like, but then again, you know, five or six people in front of us did, and I'm the one left holding the bag, right? So, <laughs> so yours, yours is showing that you're at a loss right now, yeah, $43 loss. Because when I get to when I click to close it, it says that I could sell it for three dollars and twenty cents. Uh, that platform might be delayed. <clears throat> mm. Let me take a look at the after hours and see what that looks like. Yeah, there was no movement in after hours, so I don't see any reason for it to um, have changed drastically like that. Because right now my position is showing a forty-three dollar loss. So, would you buy it at? Um, let me see. Right here, there's a resistance line. So, just under sixty-four is where I paid, or when I got in. Somewhere here, maybe 64, 15, something like that. Let me, let me see. Let me see. I'll tell you. Unless I can figure out what time, you know, the time of day I, I did it. So. Because I think I bought it for $2.75. 12, 18, 9, 34 in the morning. I 
Actually, I got a lot cheaper than that. I don't think I paid. I think I got it when it was running up right here. Somewhere around, I guess it's, it looks like it's right around this arrow. So I might have got it six, over 63, under 64. I can't really tell you exactly, though. Hmm. But it's been pumping. But again, you know, it hit. It's weird. It hit $67, and I was at $2 in profit. Should have took that. <laughs> uh, implied yeah, volatility, it man. It's, it was up there. It just it keeps doing it. Every day, it'll go. Like, Thursday, I saw an $80 loss, and then it went down to, you know, a $1.50 loss. So it, it, it fluctuates really wildly. I, I don't know why it's fluctuating so much. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me, because... You know, the IV hasn't really moved all that much, right? And, you know, if you look at the Greeks, you know, they're, well, I removed them, unfortunately. Let's see. Yeah, the Greeks don't have any crazy fluctuational movement either. And they're not super wild. Well, I mean, the Vega is a little bit. But it doesn't explain, you know, a 20 cent movement in the stock price. IV doesn't really move in. The spread value goes from negative eighty to negative dollar, so you know bid ask spreads are not super wide either. So it tells me that there's a fair, um, fair amount of buyers and sellers. But yeah, if you could take like a ten or fifteen dollar loss on this, or even twenty, it's probably a decent loss to take on something like this, considering, at least in my opinion, you know, I I put in sell orders and couldn't get out. So um, I don't mind taking a small loss. I definitely don't want to pay dividends on it. I definitely don't want to take more loss than $100, right? But, you know, it is what it is. It was a good short-term call, which is what I intended it to be. Yeah. You know, there was a few times where we saw, like I said, $20, $30. I mean, it held a $20 profit for an entire day, you know. I just got greedy. You know, that's what happens. You get greedy, it goes from a $20 win to a $50 loss. <laughs> <laughs> so... That's the game. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So ZI. ZI. Fifty three is your profit target. Uh, I wouldn't go for fifty three, Ashton. I I'd go for way less than that. Um Maybe somewhere like 50 and a half. I think 53 is just too much. I mean, you're, you're talking about at the top of the wick. That's, I mean, unless you think this thing's going to keep pumping like that, I would, I'd be looking at much sooner profit target on that. Let's see, AQMS. Another penny stock. Not too, I mean, not too long ago it was under a dollar, so I would avoid that. I mean, if you if you're in profit right now, I would highly advise of taking the profit, Edward. You got support at two thirteen, support at a dollar twelve. 
resistance at 265 and resistance at 321. If you're in it and you have profit, take it. Yeah, I, you know, I'm not going to disagree with analysts. I'm just going to say that penny stocks are dangerous. You can lose money just as fast as you can make it. It's not something you want to hold for a long term ever. Right. I mean, I, I held long on some penny stocks before and, and it was the worst trade I've ever had. And I, I've done a few pennies before, a few different penny stocks. And every one of them were bad trades for long term. Short term, you know, made some money. And then I went long on a few positions of the same stuff. And it was a bad, bad idea. So be, be careful with pennies. The stuff is highly manipulated. Any one person can affect the price of this. I mean, you know, at a dollar, you know, if you if, if somebody does two million shares, I mean, how many people would it take to do two million shares? You know, not not a lot. All right. I mean, let's see. A dollar, two million shares, that's two million dollars, right? It's actually not hard to do, especially if a hedge fund is eyeing this and they buy two million dollars worth. I mean, that's chump change to a hedge fund. So I'd stay away from pennies personally. I wouldn't look at pennies for long-term winners. I wouldn't look at them and say, you know, I want a, a 10 bagger or a hundred bagger. You know, I, I'd stay away from that kind of, that's, that's what I call a real lottery. It's not like some of these analysts throw out lottery option plays where you can get a $30 option. And if it hits, it turns into 300 or a thousand, you know, these, this is real lottery. You buy it at five cents and it goes to a dollar fifty. That's a real lottery. That's actually like winning the lottery. But you can also lose every bit of what you put into it. So again, I would I would caution to stay away. All right, anybody else? Yeah, I guess I hate to um if we don't have anyone really, I guess. Um I wanted to and I was able to finally pull up your live feed just so I can kind of see that I keep, that I keep losing you, Trev. Oh, hang on. Is that better? Sounds better. Yeah, it's strange. When I have uh, when I have your live stream up and then the Discord up at the same time, it's like an echo. So that's probably what you're hearing too. But with the AT and T, I wanted to be able to view it with you, um, and I didn't want to backtrack. But it, like that January twenty uh, second call, um, and like look at the twenty uh, twenty seven fifty, and that one, bro, you're looking at going up like ten cents. I think the premium is a buck fifty. Wait, which strike on the January twenty second? Yeah. Which strike? Um, uh, twenty seven fifty. And it just took a dip from thirty one. I think from December tenth on. And if and it looks like that twenty eight that it's sitting at now is like that support. I think. And and the way I look at it, I'm looking like even with it being a slow mover, it potentially hitting that 30, 29, no doubt, 31 by the end of the month. I just don't know if I'm looking at it right. Um, I don't, I don't, I mean, it does look like it has support here, but I don't see it. Jumping to thirty at all? 
No. Not at all. It's it's way too slow of a mover. I mean, it's going to take days for it to just get to 29, in my opinion. I mean, it's so close, right? But it's got all this green, so... Hold on. Let me go back to... And from here, I'm just going to put you on mute so I can go back to the live feed and just kind of look at your chart. Yeah, all right. Um, so, I mean, it's it's at resistance. Right? 2878 is resistance. So I think it's more probable that it falls off of that. Does it, does it go past oh, that? Has no I think it's hey. more probable that it I don't see any reason for it to continue up, right? It's it's already made its move up. Now it's making its move down. Right? I think yeah. it's going to honestly fall back down to this, this $27 or so area, 27 26 area. Maybe not quite that low. Maybe like uh, 27 and a half or something like that. Yeah, but just, yeah. Okay. Does that help? Yeah, no, definitely. All right, cool. Okay. Anybody else? Quick question. Hey, right here. I'm sorry. Uh, sure. I, I just at the news. It says that. Quick question. Hey, right here. I'm sorry. Uh, sure. I, I, it says that. Uh, Jack is is missing. You think that Baba will go down, or like what do you think about that based on the news? Jack Ma is missing. Is that what you said? You hear me? You said you said Jack Ma is missing. Yeah, um, there is a news that Jack Ma is suspected missing. <laughs> that's that's probably get this stock further down, man. <laughs> that's I'm sorry, I want to hear you. What do you say? Uh, I think that that's just some BS that they're pulling to get the stock to drop further. In my opinion, I mean, I mean, they say they haven't seen him like last two months. They haven't seen him. Yeah, but just now, all of a sudden, after the stock did it, did it a big drop. <laughs> yes. then, you know what I mean? Like, that's, yeah. That's so tricky. they are just trying to pull him down. They are trying their best to, you know, pull him down um, because Jack Ma is, you know, kind of doing really good in China, and you know, China is kind of uh, it's not a democratic man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I see Baba falling further. Honestly, um, a lot of people. There's a couple of folks, I'm not going to name any names, but, you know, people that I talk to on a regular basis and they were saying, oh, no, you know, Bob was going to pump and it did pump. Don't get me wrong. It did go to 240 plus, but it's coming back down now and I think it's going to fall below uh, 200. I think it's going to see 190 area. Personally, I would love to see hit 190 that I'm going to jump in again. I mean, I only made 50 bucks on it, but I did that across four accounts so i made 200 on it <laughs> i could have made a lot more but you no know, money's money right i yeah i had a leaps and uh, you know uh, made a couple hundreds and i closed the position next day and you know i could have made somewhere around 800, 800 because my my strike was 250 when and i get in at 218 when it was trading 218 so, yeah, there was a nice call. Yeah, I mean, I think I was a little bit too overzealous with getting out. I should have given it another day. Had I given it another day, I would have seen crazy money. But, you know, hindsight 2020, I mean, it can't always be right. You know what I mean? Like, it could have went up, and then it could have fallen. So, so it could have fallen. I have a bad story about crypto. What about crypto? 
Yeah, I mean, I at one point I was almost hundred hundred more than hundred k in profit, and mm. uh, ended ended up making only you know five thousand. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, and I at that time I was in Vegas, so that was the month. You know, uh, that was first time that I ever been to casino because um, I never been to casino. So that was my first trip to Vegas, and I don't play usually, you know, in casino, so I don't go. And uh, that was a trip, so I was kind of ready to throw some money, like you know, a couple of grand if I here and there, and I made money over there as well. As a beginner, luck I would say <laughs> I didn't have any idea how to play, but I mostly played in craps and while i was playing craps you know overnight i was watching cryptos uh at one point i was mining coins and uh, i had so many coins and it was like all time high because this is the story 2017 december and january so all the cryptos were there high like almost anywhere you throw your money was 1000% up right yeah i didn't take profit man <laughs> and i lost i mean i w- i made money but i would say i i lost you lost 95% of the profits <laughs> yeah yep that's got to hurt i mean you still made money yep. though but hmm. so th- this is a recent story of dogcoin right that i had i just bought dogcoin like 15 days before i had a 410000 dogcoin i i i made 300 and i sold it and now the dog coin i would have made 6000 on it right now if i sell it right now i would make 6000 dollar yeah i don't i don't like crypto man there's no no kind of analysis that i can do on that to say oh, this is a good entry this is a good exit <laughs> you know just yeah it it is based on your luck man i would say there is no any kind of you know fundamental that you can do about crypto how bitcoin is going this way we have no idea right and if 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 it would fall it would fall like 10k in a day i mean it could right. there is no surprise if it does yeah that's that's another reason why i don't touch it cuz it's like it its drops are super strong its pumps yeah. are strong but its drops are stronger <laughs> drops is crazy <laughs> 3000 you can see in an hour yeah, that's that's um it's pretty wild. All right, anybody else have any questions before I end in this? What's up, Hosta? What do you think about OMPX? NPX. Um, it's LMPX. It's a vehicle company. Hmm. I think it'll drop a little bit more. Maybe down to twenty dollars or so. I mean, it's kind of kangarooing within between 30, 37, and 22, 35. So, I don't know. That's about all I can say. I mean, I don't know too much about this company. I've never heard of them. Um, Edward, I went over CLSK recently. I uh, mentioned that it's double top in here. I'd recommend rewatching the video. Um, I give a detailed explanation on CLS, CLSK. Uh, was that all you had, uh, Richard? Did you have anything else you wanted to ask? Uh, not that I can think of right now. Anybody else? Last chance. Um, what do you think about Amazon? About Amazon, you said? Yeah, Amazon. 
I think Amazon is definitely going to start an uptrend here pretty soon, potentially. I mean, it's been squeezing for a while, and then it broke above uh, most recent resistance at 32.57. Now it's using it as support. So right here. So it broke above this level. Right here is where it broke. It stayed above it. Now it's using it as support. You see that? Theresa, you see that? Yeah, I see it. Okay. So I think it's going to bounce off this support and start another way, uh, trend upward. Breach this 3350 short term high. Yeah, I think it's going to be an uptrend moving forward. Do you think it's going to reach the all-time highs this week again? Uh, not this week. That's too soon. Yeah, it's too soon. What? Uh, maybe in a month, month and a half. We'll see it touch it and maybe probably test it and potentially break it. But there's got to be some kind of Amazon news to, to push it past. So just keep a watch out on it. Yeah, I mean, Amazon's expensive to play, though, so I'd be careful with that. I mean, unless you're working yeah. with a lot of cash, you know, I'd be very, very careful with messing with that one. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Anybody Hostile. Um, yeah. Kind of question, um, you know, it's a generic question. Like, how should I po manage my port? Um, because you know what I what I am doing at this point is, let's say if I make a uh, five five hundred dollar, then I would go for gambling. So I would throw like hundred <laughs> or couple hundred dollars for gambling, Don't and you know, <laughs> I'm I'm keep on doing that. I I have idea that you know, and and the thing is. I have I I I don't have that much knowledge that you have, or Tilio does, right? At that point, if you guys do, I shouldn't copy that because if you are gambling, then that is that could be sixty forty. But if I do gambling, that would be a ninety five five dollars. So five percent chances would be winning. Ninety five is not. If you or Tilio does, that would be sixty forty. Well, uh, <laughs> so you're in the right channel, right? Like you're in selling premium channel. You're you're interested in those consistent returns, right? It's not big returns, but they're consistent, right? That's what you should concentrate on. When you make five hundred bucks, put it in another position that's going to be a consistent return type of position. Don't go gamble away on buying options, right? That's the last thing okay. that I would do. Like when I make. Like when I make two hundred bucks or three hundred dollars, I don't I don't go and buy an option with it. I, I just recycle it, put it into another CSP, and continue doing what I'm doing. And you know, over time, that three hundred dollars turns into three thousand. You know, in a couple of months, another couple of months, that three thousand turns into six thousand. You know, another couple of months, that six thousand turns into twelve. And if you're working with $100,000 or some large number, it's very easy to double your money when you've got that kind of money. I mean, honestly, especially with these type of plays that FaZe and I do, you know, these CSPs and covered calls, you know, very easy to make a lot of money with a lot of money, right? But if you've only got 500 you bucks, you, you can't do CSPs. You need 30K. To do four or five positions I, I completely get it how to do csp and the covered call i'm like 100 percent sure what i'm doing i get those things um the thing is like now i have to pick the watch list like what should i pick for the csp i am following you you and the phase at that point but you know i also want to do from my side like you know making nice watch list and just do csp until i have a nice port because those things will make safe money and good profit so far so i mean i made money this december 
and whatever profit I made that was only from CSP and covered call. That's all. Whatever I did with the options, I lost all the money. Yes, that's exactly how it goes for me too. I mean, if I buy options, it's almost guaranteed loss. I mean, it's just, it's not my style of trading. I don't find it fascinating. I don't have the time for it. You know, I, my, my analysis doesn't go into that type of trading. Whereas the CSPs and the covered calls, my analysis, that's, it's perfect for me. So I have 100% success with that kind of stuff. You know, like um, credit spreads, I'm like 80, 20, 60, 40 sometimes. Um, but CSPs, both the phase and I, you know, it's, I would argue it's 100% every time because you don't take a loss if you get assigned shares, right? You just yes. turn around and sell, sell calls against it and continue taking in premium until it hits your strike. Right. So, yep. I mean, it's, it's a win win, right? Unless you, you're buying some trash, um, there's a chance of that. Um, what is CSP? Sorry. Cash secured puts. So, you're selling the puts? Or Sell, you, selling puts, selling? yes, with okay. cash to cover it in case it goes against me. Okay. So, it'll assign me shares if. It goes against me, basically. Oh, I see. Okay. I'm actually, FaZe and I are um, in the process of making a video uh, that describes CSPs, covered calls, as one strategy, which is called a wheel strategy. So I should have that video out pretty soon. I think it'll really highly benefit everybody that watches it because it's going to open up minds. And, you know, not too many people notice or recognize the safe plays that, you know, cash secured puts are. And once people recognize it and understand that, you know, it's it's not a guaranteed loss, like an, a buying an option, if it doesn't go your way. They will come to you and they will kiss you, man. When they get to know, they will come to you and they will kiss you. <laughs> I don't want any kisses. <laughs> <laughs> But I will tell you that, Man. you know, it's it's life changing. I promise you, especially if you've got 30K or 40 or 50,000, you know, with 500 bucks, you can't do it. Right. But, you know, you need you need substantial amounts of cash to do it. Right. So the only way to get to that point is to swing shares, in my opinion, right? unless you're really good at buying options and swinging options or whatever and, and making returns off of that. Um, do shares. This is how I got to where I am, right? I mean, you know, I got the thirty-four thousand dollars from just swinging shares, you know. And this whole entire year, I've done cash secured puts and and share swings, and I've made a hundred percent return just doing that, right? All the losses that I've taken have been from buying options. You know, I took big loss from Tesla. I went and played Tesla, and so I. I I had shares of Tesla. I made, you know, a thousand dollars on the Tesla shares. Turn around and did a a buy option on Tesla and lost eight hundred bucks. So I'm like, screw this. I'm not doing option buying. I'm going to continue doing what works for me, which is share swings and CSPs. But again, um, I'm going to have a video <clears throat> uh, put out pretty soon. Uh, that's going to explain this in great detail. So, you know, hopefully everybody watches it and starts to pay attention to that kind of strategy because, man, it's, it's this is what's going to pay the bills in the future. This is what's going to um, make me a millionaire. In, in five to ten years, I'll have a few million dollars in my Roth account. I'll be making $200,000 every month or so, give or take, from this strategy. <laughs> When are you putting the video up? <laughs> um, soon. Um, so I've I've got everything written out. Um, it's it's a it's very very detailed. So um, it's probably going to be a good. I'm trying to make it a five to ten minute video, but I'll be honest, it might be about twenty or thirty minutes. But um, you know, I've I've written all of the organizational stuff out so that when Faze and I go through the video. 
Um, one of us will be talking, one of us will be presenting. So we'll kind of be tackling it together to speed things up. So hopefully, you know, it'll be within the next few days. I mean, I'll be honest, some um, phases has had some issues with his family. So I've had to push it off. Um, so as soon as he gets availability, it's going to be up. Okay. Can't wait. Thank you. But I am excited because this strategy is phenomenal. Uh, hostile. Yes. Um, you know, uh, I think I talked to you about it before, but when do you think uh, there there will be a a downside for SPY? You know, like a, a actual dip, not not just like a little little hiccup. Um, I think this is about next month or two. Right, the market's been pumping for a solid two months. Right. Um, <clears throat> I think SPY has been starting its upward trend uh, last week or two of October, and it's been going up since. I'd give the whole entire market up until the middle of January to February before it starts doing a backwards movement. I mean, you got to remember the stock market doesn't just go up. You know, it doesn't just go up every day, every month, every quarter. It retraces. Every stock retraces, every ETF and index retraces, and the whole entire market retraces. You know, it might not fall down to its previous lows. Generally, it doesn't because it's always long-term and a bullish trend. But short-term, there is retracement. So, so next a month or so, um, 45 days maybe. Why do you think it will be around that time frame? Well, every year you have a historical um, quarterly trend, right? Um, and I, I, I've said this before, but you know, the months that I've typically seen solid bullishness is November, December, January. And then it turns bearish or neutral. Typically, it goes neutral, then bearish, then neutral, then bullish, right? Um, so February, March, I typically see neutral to negative or bearishness. Um, picks up end of March, start of April. Month of April is typically bullish. May is typically bearish. June and July are typically bullish. August it's a first week to middle, maybe towards the end is somewhere. It's relative. It stays bullish and then goes neutral. And then September, October, almost always are bearish. And the, the two most bearish months out of the year are September and October. The two most bullish months out of the year, in my opinion, are November and December or June and July. Those two are arguably debatable. On which one's more bullish. Um, but that's a general relative estimation on quarterly trends. All right. It's not always going to be that specific month. It's not always going to happen at the start of the month or at the end of the month. You know, it, it's it's not the same every year, but relatively speaking, it's within that time frame of a month to month and a half between that that point. If that makes sense. It's a spectrum. So, I mean, look back this year uh, and you can see what I mean. Like this year is almost like exactly what I mean. Um, previous years, th they don't hit specifically like, like that. But, you know, you can see generalized, generally speaking, you know, there is a, a spectrum of the time frame where it changes. The trend changes. Right. So um, look back and see. I guarantee you, you'll you'll see some some kind of uniformity. I do see it. It, it almost have this kind of drop. 
um, in the same time frame. Not precisely like the the same time, but you know, approximately a uh, similar time. Yeah, I mean, it's like you know, you've got um, two bearish months, two bullish months, a neutral to bullish or neutral to bearish month. You know, it mixes. But there's always going to be two and two, and then one month is going to be one or the other or neutral or both, right? So it's hard to say which months do what and how long it's going to last. What I can tell you is it it seesaws. It goes from bullish to bearish to neutral to bullish, neutral, bearish, bullish, neutral. You know, it, it just it goes in between them. It's like a roller coaster. I've always explained this. Imagine a roller coaster. Roller coaster goes up, goes down, goes left, goes right, and does circles. That's what the market does. And the the key is to figure out the direction that it's in and play that direction. Right? Instead of trying to beat the market, we play the market. And that's the beauty. That's how we make money. True, true. It just uh, I'm just thinking about my my um my share positions. Just thinking if there's gonna be a bullish, I mean a, a a bearish month for the whole market. I you know better off selling uh, a lot of my my share positions before that month. You know. Well, that's so why I, I always can't... say you know I, I swing shares. Right, because I know that happens. You know, I'm, if I sit on something for long periods of time, yeah, I mean, you can make good returns, but I can make more off of the market's movements. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Tesla. Like, I sold at 650, 680, 690. It's a 700 something. But when it comes back down to 500 and change, I'm gonna get back in, and then it goes back up to 650 or 700. I'm gonna sell it. Then it falls back down to 600. I'm going to get back in. And then it goes back up to 700. I'm going to sell it. Right. So, you know, in, instead of me having just stayed in the position once, I can recycle that money, compound that money, and turn my gains into more than they would have been had I just sat in that position for a long period of time. The whole thing here is compound interest. Or compound returns, I guess. Is uh, so I have a question for you about that. Okay. So let's just say I uh, made calls for uh, SPY ETF. Uh, and I just put it up at, at like, let's say it was at like 65 and I always just made, I just put like um, about like five contracts, right? At six, one, what did I say? 165, right? And let's say I, I made I bought five contracts for 166, and um, the swing is for a whole month, right? The contract's good for a whole month. Isn't it like guaranteed money at that point? If I just continually do that, holding options? <laughs> no, no, just making plays only on spy. Oh, I mean, you could, but. You know, at some point, it's going to reverse, and you're going to get caught in front of that wave. Right? So, so if, if, I, if I you're feel like always, it's harder to follow the money and keep up with so many different companies all at the same time, especially like specs, um, than just following one company in general. I mean, you know, you know, you you do what's best for you, right? I mean, for me, I, I prefer to follow specific companies because an ETF is not going to work for me. I'm not interested in 500 companies in, in one ticker, right? I'm interested in one company that, that makes its own moves. Um, if that works for you, great. If not, if you would rather do the spy, you know, again, that's, that's your prerogative, right? But at some point, just constantly playing the spy in a bullish position, it's, you're going to get hit with a wave, right? So right now you're riding a wave. And at some point, there's going to be a new wave and it's going to be coming at you. So at what point do you stop riding the wave and take your profits and sit on cash and wait for that wave to start going the other direction, 
right? Because it does. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Richard, um, are all your stocks that you're in at all time highs? Um, except uh, a lot of them, like uh, um, what is that called? Uh, Tesla, Apple. The so, rest, no. I don't have a lot of positions really. Um, Tesla, I would recommend you put a trail and stop on it somewhere. Um, but Apple, I see Apple going up further. Uh, what do you think about Beyond then? I actually just picked it up recently because I see it, it it went down a lot. Um, I, I think I saw that before and it was at a support level or something. Um, let me take another look at it. Yeah, it's at support. Um, it did take a huge hit, though. I mean, it's at a good support level right now. 125 is a pretty damn good support. I mean, let me draw this out. And look at that. Yeah, How I'm many points? Four or five of those. You know, but at what point does this fall to where, I mean, it's in the middle of its one-year range, in my opinion, and it could go either way. And it's a new stock. You think it can go lower? What's that? You think it can go lower? Oh, yeah, of course. I think it could. Will it? What's the probability of it going lower? Uh, maybe not as much as it going higher. But, you know, there, this is a hard one because it's it doesn't even have a full year's worth of historical data for me to analyze. All right, so I can't. I don't think it does at least before I say that. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have very much. I think we see, I mean, it's setting lower lows, right? Setting lower lows, lower highs. It's that support. It could go either way. Hard to say. Well, that lower low was, uh, what was that lower low? Was that during the COVID? No, I'm talking about recent. A so, recent, okay, yeah. Here, I'll show you. So you got the high, and then it made, well, it, it basically made a lower low this whole time, you know, every day. Um, so lower lows, all of that. Right? These are all lower lows. There's one, there's one, there's another. It just keeps making them. All right? Then it tried to do a retracement, and then tanked hard. And, and blew through support. But then it bounced, went up. Now it's retesting that support. Right? That makes me nervous because it keeps trying to test it. Right? And with all the sell and pressure, I mean, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't doubt it goes lower. Maybe back down to this um, 107 area on the second standard deviation channel. That, that to me is a good entry at that point. That's a, that's one that I wouldn't turn down. Let's say that. If I see it at 107 on the second standard deviation channel, I'll probably buy some shares at least. Let's see how much uh, leaps on this thing cost. Ooh, three grand. Mm. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. I'll buy $500 stuff, but <laughs> three grand. Uh, you, you buy a leap, you said? You could buy leaps right now. I'd say, yeah. I mean, maybe June. June leaps would be safe. You know, I'd say uh, typically with leaps, you want to get something that is going to be in the money. So let's look at 145. 45. That's 1,500. That's not bad. Um, 
I'd probably go with the 150 though because there's a bit more open interest there. Uh, but the problem is, is there's not a lot of OI. I mean, this one's the best, 1100 at 200 strike. I mean, that's at its high. So that must have been people that bought when it was up there. Yeah, well, they they're in for in for a bad deal then. Yeah, very possible. And that's what I was thinking. The reason why I entered was because I saw it's you know at the 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 third standard deviation channel. Yeah, I mean. Again, standard deviation channels are are really great to use. Um, when did you enter? I answered when uh, I answered. I think on Thursday, on Thursday or Wednesday. Somewhere here. Uh, what time frame are you looking at the, the deviation channels? I think I was looking at the four hours. Uh, so 180? Okay. Must have moved down afterwards. Yeah. Had to have. Uh, I bought it when it was at 125 and 126. I mean, that's its closed price, 125. So, I mean, it's. It's not a bad idea, right? Especially considering its its recent high. Yeah, I told myself if it goes down more, I'll average down. Especially if it goes yeah, down yeah. below 110, you know, I'm going in heavy. Not heavy, you know, I'm going in. Yeah, I mean, double up your position. Be, be okay. Yeah, yeah. I have six shares. I I can get six more shares, no problem. Let me set a limit order at one oh seven or something. Yeah. Um What do you think about your lead? Who? Uh G Led. I think that's what it it's one of those a vaccine company is one of those COVID company, it went down so much recently. What's the ticker? It's D I L D. B I L D? No. Oh, no. G as in. Oh, Guild. Gilead. Yeah, Guild. Yeah, Gilead. Yeah. They're just not doing very well, period. They've been downtrending for a while. I mean, look, back in 2016, and it's high, fallen, tried to come back up and just fell. Finally got a little bit of strength this year from COVID, and now it's hit an all-time low. I mean, all-time low. Look at 10 years. Well, okay, I'm wrong. Not all-time low, but... Yeah, but this stock is shit, basically. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's not doing so well. That I can and agree I, I, with. Yeah, man, and I went in kind of heavy because I don't know who told me to, or maybe I did, but, you know, it just... It, I haven't seen the upside on this company for, like, three months straight. I mean, I, I, it's, I think it's an okay company. You know, I think... At some point, it's going to start coming back up. Um, but, I mean, they pay dividends. There's that. So if they're paying dividends, as long as they're paying dividends, they're not going out of business. Yeah, I don't know how they're paying dividend when their stock is going down, like, so much and so rapidly. Not rapidly, you know, so consistently. Well, I mean, you know, their their earnings are actually... This one's less than estimated. That one's better. So it had 
two out of three that were better than estimated. So, I mean, there's no reason why it to be, for it to be fallen. And I think it's just money that's in other areas of the market and not in guild. guild. That's all. I don't, I don't think there's anything that makes the company bad. I mean, their, their earnings and, sh and revenue is positive. They'll probably just wait, uh, wait their turn. Probably right now is not their time. Yeah. As I said, you yeah. know, the, the market's a roller coaster. And right now, this one's at the bottom of, of its ride. At some point, yeah, it's going to come back. I just have to bag hold it for like a little bit right now. Yeah, that's all you do is bag hold. I mean... I wouldn't worry too much about it for now. Yeah. As long as it doesn't go down below like 40 bucks, I think I'll just hold it for not. I don't know. Hard to say on that one. Hard to say when to cut that. I mean, I sure hope it doesn't keep falling. I mean, it's at a yeah. low. It's, it's at a three-year low. You know? So... I mean, not Pfizer, but Pfizer is really low, too. Pfizer is not going up at all. I don't understand. Pfizer is, you know, one of those companies, a big company that's they're going to they're going to. A lot of vaccine stuff. I don't know why they're falling so much. You know, Well, same thing with Moderna. Moderna hit 180 and now it's been just tanking since. Right. It's it's all hype. There's nothing to do with those companies as far as why people are investing in them other than the hype so the hype pumps them and then as everything gets priced in and and the market actually starts to to become a free market or, or continue as a free market then everything starts to come back out right I and mean, that that's why i always recommend swinging stuff swinging shares get in at a low wait for it to pump get out at a high go to the next thing right Long long term holes aren't going to benefit you because there's going to be all that movement in between that you're just leaving money on the table, you know. Yeah, and, but and right this now this stuff I'll is be... priced in, right? And guilt has nothing to do with COVID vaccines. You know, initially they did during the 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 whole scare at the start of the year, but ever since. The sell-off happened in September. They they haven't recovered from that, and they I haven't seen them in the news at all as far as um, having anything to do with COVID vaccines. It's been Moderna, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, and a couple other ones. I'm I'm in a lot of Pfizer right now. Their shares. But you you do think in the future? I mean, you said it's all a, a, a hype, but well, Pfizer does more know, than COVID vaccines. They do tons of other things. They make, they make Viagra too. <laughs> I mean, they're gonna need that during the COVID lockdown, probably, because you know a lot of people are inside. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I just hope that goes up because I, I can't only buy the hype. You know, I didn't know it was a hype play. I didn't know it was a news play. So I just kept it. I didn't I didn't cash out because I, I was expecting it to go higher. But now I'm just back holding this this again, you know, so. I can just wait, I guess. Well, if you're down, I would definitely wait. Yeah. It'll come back up. I, don't, I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's a solid company. Especially if they're going to distribute a lot of vaccines, I would think they were, you know, stable. Who knows? I just, I know P, uh, Pfizer has um, been around a long time. It's a blue chip stock. So I wouldn't worry about it, you know. Just hold it until you until you see profits. You know, I mean, if you had a hundred shares, you could sell calls against it. Yeah. Well, um, 
I feel like when I do that, I'm just thinking if I do that, the share will start r rotting it up. That'll be, you know, I'll just lose money for no reason. Well, because it, it is sell, pretty low right now. If you sell calls against 100 shares, you're not going to lose any money. Unless you are selling the call for a lower value than what you paid for the shares. So there's that. I think I just hold it and just not think about it right now. Yeah, just set a limit Once, exit order on it and then walk away from it. Average down if yeah. you can. So OUN has a question. What do I think? What do I think SPY will close out tomorrow? I have no idea. It could be up. It could be down. There, there's no telling. Um, what option strategy would I suggest for trading a 20-day moving average? I don't really use moving averages. As a matter of fact, I don't use them at all. So I couldn't tell you what to use, what type of strategy to use off of that type of indicator, unfortunately. Um, Cal could probably help you out with that. I know he uses moving averages. So maybe give him a shout and see what he thinks about it. Why don't you, you use moving averages? It's not, it doesn't work in my kind of strategy. Right. I mean, maybe it would, but there's just too many, like, I don't want too much stuff on my charts and what I do, the type of trading that I do, you know, I don't, I don't really care about moving averages. I'm only interested in support and resistance and trend. That's it. I don't need anything else. Now I've got a couple of indicators on my chart, but that's just for um, understanding extreme levels. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. What kind of strategies do I use? Cash secured puts and cover calls and shares, swing in shares off of support and resistance. That's my strategy. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Well, I think I'm going to end in the session. Um, you know, we're going to have these weekly, as you all know. So do look forward to them and come back with more questions. Cal's sessions are typically just charting. Uh, my sessions are more geared towards question and answer. So, thanks everybody. Have a good night. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Thank you.